Hi, it's Gary, and thanks for joining me on the second part of the discussion we've been having on understanding the behavior of soundboard material in terms of its physical and acoustic properties. And the idea is if you have a basic understanding of how it behaves, then you'll make better decisions in terms of selection of your materials and understand how you're manipulating it physically and acoustically throughout your building process. So let's start by recapping very briefly what we touched on in part one. And in part one, I talked to you about how wood is highly variable, especially in terms of things like density. And density is highly correlated with stiffness in that higher density materials are stiffer, particularly in the direction of the grain. Then I went on to show you how different soundboard samples, which have different densities, have different pitches when we tap them even if the samples had the same dimensions. And that's because the pitch of a piece of wood when we tap it, whether it's in a raw form or shaped as a soundboard, is highly correlated to its stiffness. I also described how pitch is inversely proportional to weight. But for most manipulations that we do in guitar building, such as thinning a soundboard plate or adding bracing and carving bracing, the stiffness changes that we employ often change much faster than the weight changes. And so for most of the operations that we do, we can think of pitch being influenced mainly by stiffness and less so by weight. Next, I also showed you how different pieces of cedar, which had the same dimensions but different densities, we could also pick up the frequencies that they were resonating at namely that the lower density piece of cedar on the top had a lower frequency pitch compared to the higher density sample on the bottom. And then I introduced the idea that you could use density to select your soundboards and that would give you an advantage in your consistency or the ability to steer the sound how you wanted. So I illustrated how if you didn't select based on density and you just use the random abundance of wood to, at your disposal and you dimensioned everything in your guitars of the same thickness, then your sound quality would probably be all over the map as shown in red. But if you selected based on density, even when you use the same thicknesses on your soundboards, you would still get better consistency and probably a better sound as shown in the green curve. And where we're headed with all of this is that if we not only control the density of our material during the selection, but we optimize the thickness during construction and we optimize the bracing and the brace carving among many other things, not only can we tighten the consistency of all of our guitars, but we can direct the sound. The point of all of this is that the density, the stiffness, the pitches that we hear right now in this raw form, and then through the intermediate steps of our soundboard construction, have huge influence on the ultimate sound of the guitar. And what we bake into the guitar now is what will come out in the very end. And so if we take care of it now and through the whole process, our chances are very good that we can get to that blue curve. So let me start by giving you a basic understanding of how thinning wood changes the acoustic properties of that material. And then I want to show you a comparison of how spruce compares to cedar in terms of acoustic properties. So let's get over to the workbench now and have a look. Now I want to demonstrate for you how thinning a board can change its acoustic properties. And if you remember in episode 7, which is part 1 of this video, I showed you that I had two identically sized pieces of cedar. The only difference is that one piece of cedar had a higher density than the other. So let's review by giving you a listen to the tap tones of each. Here's the higher one at 0.38 grams per cubic centimeter. and the lower density one at 0.30 grams per cubic centimeter. 
And what we hear and what we see in the low end of the spectrum is what we'd expect, that the lower density one has a lower pitch because it's more flexible or less stiff. And so the question is, can we take the higher density board, which has the higher pitch, and thin it to make it sound more similar to the lower density one? So let's take this higher density one over to the drum sander, thin it, and let's tap it after that. Back here at the workbench, what I did over there on the drum sander was to thin the plate so that I could sneak up slowly to the frequency of the uh, lower density plate. And I did that by tapping and monitoring slowly on the computer. And eventually I got to a point where the flexibility was such that the resonant peaks matched up and you can see that in this spectrum. And what we have on this figure is a spectrum of the lower density plate on the top, and it had a resonant frequency, the fundamental frequency at 71 hertz. And then by thinning the higher density plate shown on the bottom, I was able to drop its frequency about 12 hertz to match that of the the lower density plate. Now looking at a few numbers to see how we invoked this frequency change, you can see that the change of thickness was quite small. It was only a 14% change in thickness, and yet that invoked a 43% decrease in stiffness. So it's not a linear relationship by any means. In fact, we'll talk in later videos how the change in stiffness changes to the third power of the change in, in thickness. And this is a, a good example of how when we carve braces or thin plates, the stiffness can change really rapidly, so we have to be very careful and make small changes in thickness with the idea that the stiffness can change drastically right in front of us. And as an aside, in a future video, I'm going to show you how we can directly measure stiffness. But getting back to our story, finally, looking at the weight change, there was a 14% decrease in weight. And this further illustrates the principle that I mentioned earlier, that the pitch of a resonating body is proportional to its stiffness, but also inversely proportional to its weight. And this is a good example of how the stiffness changes much faster than the weight, and the weight is not uh, such a big factor in this whole process of thinning to a certain uh, new frequency. Now the question is, we got the fundamental frequencies aligned, and so these frequencies are benchmarked to one another, but do they give the same results? And the answer is not really. So let's take a listen to the, the two plates when we tap them. So here is the lower density plate, which we didn't change, but just listen as a reference. And here's the higher density plate, which we just thinned where the fundamental frequencies are the same. Unless your hearing is really attuned to lower pitches or it's trained to listen to lower pitches, what we just heard seems contrary to what we see in the spectra. 
I actually hear that the plate that we thinned sounds on average higher pitched than the one that we didn't thin. And so how do we reconcile this? Let's look at the spectra again. While the fundamental frequencies are matched, the other higher harmonics are not. And now we can begin to appreciate how different structures give rise to different sounds from one guitar to the next. So just looking at this, these frequencies, you can see that while the, the fundamental frequency, the lowest pitches are matched, we have other peaks that aren't. And if you remember from discussions from the previous part where I described different resonances as the engines that potentiate sound making in guitars, you start to see how different makeups of resonant peaks could give rise to different types of voices in different guitars. And unless you are trying to match from the very beginning, such as using same density, and then invoke thinning, you still could come up with a different result. And of course, in this, this demonstration, I've compared wildly different densities, 0.38 compared to 0.30 grams per cubic centimeter is a big, big difference. It's like 20% difference. And I recommend that when you build and select different um, soundboards, that you, from guitar to guitar, if you want to build in consistency, select boards that are no different, no more different than about six to seven percent difference. That's like on the order of 0.38 versus 0.35 grams per cubic centimeter. By now you're getting more comfortable with the idea that different harmonic envelopes give rise to different voices in different guitars. And even though some different pieces of material might be grounded in the same fundamental frequencies, they can still give rise to different sounding guitars. And that complexity might be somewhat confounding or frustrating to us as builders. There is hope because what I've shown you is that by controlling as many variables as we can, we can have control over the sound. And one of the other factors that we often consider when building guitars is the actual species of soundboard material. So let's take a look at cedar versus spruce and see how they match up in terms of their tap tones and their resonant frequencies. So again, I have two matched uh, sets of, in terms of dimension and density. One is our friend the cedar, and a new one, which is Engelmann spruce. So let's hear, again, the Western Red Cedar tap tone. And compare that to a matched size and density piece of Engelmann spruce. And I think you're familiar enough now that right off the bat you can hear that there's a difference in pitch and also complexity. So let's take a look at the spectrum now of what we just tapped. Now looking at the upper panel, which is the cedar piece, it's fundamental frequency is shifted to lower frequency relative to the spruce piece. And this is fairly characteristic of cedar in that it is a more flexible species when compared to spruces. And this is also pretty reminiscent of the reputation that cedar has in, in guitars. And we know as guitarists, that we think of cedar guitars as being warm and bass oriented. And I think that's generally true, um, partly because of something that might be more of an artificial um, phenomenon, and that is that the fact that they're bass oriented, they are, they are more flexible. And unless you compensated for that flexibility, you would tend to have darker, richer, warmer sounding guitars. But you could make a cedar guitar sound very sprucey, which I've done in the past, 
by increasing its stiffness, by increasing its thickness. The other thing that we heard, though, in the recording is that the spruce sounds more filtered, especially in the higher harmonics. And that is perfectly in line with its reputation that it is often a pure sound. And I believe that spruce guitars can have a very warm sound if you make their soundboards more flexible. And I particularly believe that the first string of spruce guitars can sound even warmer than uh, those of cedar because there's more filtering and less higher harmonic that tends to make the sound of the first string uh, thinner. So I think you can be more sophisticated in the way that you're listening to uh, the sound of a guitar. The character is not just one type of character, but you can think of it maybe in terms of listening to the bass range, the middle range, as well as the treble range, and maybe even the ultra treble range on the first string to really judge the, the attributes of the voice of guitars. Fortunately for me, I build primarily double top guitars where I combine a layer of cedar, which brings the attributes of warm bass and mid-range and very boisterous and good sustain and volume with the control of a cedar layer that gives a, a nice first string that is very penetrating, pure, and not overly crowded with the higher harmonics that could make it sound thin. The differences between cedar and spruce can be ascribed to the cellular makeup of the two species and also possibly the difference in the ratio of the, the width grain to cross grain stiffnesses. And so what about comparing now different species of spruce? So I have, again, a piece of European and the same Engelmann spruce that we just heard and they're of the same dimension and the same density. So let's have a listen now. Here's the Engelmann piece. And here's the European piece. And just from the tap tones, I think you can hear that they're pretty similar, considering that we've controlled for all the physical dimensions and density. Let's take a look at the spectra now and see if it confirms that. So looking at the spectra for the Engelmann spruce on the top versus the European on the bottom, not only do you see that the fundamental frequencies are almost identical, but the higher order resonances are virtually the exact fingerprint of one another. And so I can be very confident that I can use either species interchangeably in my guitars. And it's really, uh, my decision point is uh, what density I want to select out of my stacks of wood. Now that we understand the variables better and know how our materials behave tonally, then now we're in the driver's seat that we can control variability and get better consistency. And now where we're headed is to actually control the sound the way that we want our guitars to sound. So that when you get to the point where you've already decided spruce or cedar, you've got the shape of your soundboard, you've decided on the density, then what we'll do next when we get together in actually building a guitar top is we will start to thin a top. And instead of taking a top thickness based on a plan or what somebody else did, we might have a better idea of how to thin it based on stiffness and flexibility or perhaps to some target resonance. So I hope you stay tuned for a future video when we'll start actually building tops. We'll see you then.